Hey there folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Dengar Action Figure Set by Hasbro. This set is the first in the Vintage Collection series and was first released in 2010. I cannot remember uh, when I purchased this, uh, probably 2010 or 11. And I cannot remember where I purchased this, uh, probably uh, based on the lack of a price sticker. Uh, Target or Toys R Us. Uh, it's interesting to note that this being the first in the vintage collection, you can still find this figure set on the pegs. Uh, I don't know, he seems to be a bit, a, a bit of a peg warmer, but uh, kind of neat uh, being the first in the series. Now, taking a look at Dengar in the packaging, you can see the bounty hunter there, uh, one of the iconic six bounty hunters, and uh, looks uh, very nice uh, in the packaging. And you can see a nice uh, photo of Dengar. Now I'm not sure uh, which is actually flipped, uh, the character design or the uh, photograph here. Because as you can see, uh, they are uh, flipped versions of each other here. So it's very interesting. And uh, this uh, particular figure is part of the, I guess, Empire Strikes Back subline of the vintage collection. Pretty neat. Here we have the back of the package with uh, the uh, Vintage Collection logo at the top left here, Dengar's name, and the actual, uh, I guess, original carded figure, uh, which is pretty cool. Here we have uh, the Vintage Collection number in the series, uh, number one. And here we have a nice description of basically the Star Wars saga, not really about the Vintage Collection. But you do have some information about the vintage collection, uh, or the vintage card, the original Dengar card, uh, which was first released uh, between uh, 1980 and 1982. Down here we have other figures from the uh, vintage collection line. We have a Cloud Car Pilot, Boba Fett, Luke Skywalker, Leia, and C-3PO. Pretty cool. Uh, we'll be right back and have Dengar out of the package. Okay, we're back and we have Dengar out of the package. And I'm a big fan of bounty hunters in the Star Wars universe. Especially uh, the iconic six that were featured in the Empire Strikes Back, of which uh, Dengar was a member of. And uh, to have one of the iconic six in figure form is a real treat. Especially one as uh, well detailed and sculpted as uh, this guy here. Now, before we take a look at Dengar... We're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at the items that come included in the set. And first up, we have this here. And this is basically a uh, redemption uh, certificate for the exclusive rocket firing Boba Fett figure. Basically, you just fill this information out and include the UPC codes from any five figures from the Star Wars Build a Droid assortment, uh, Saga Legends, Clone Wars, or the Vintage Collection. Uh, I'm not uh, a person that actually clips out UPC codes because I really like backing cards and uh, packaging. Uh, and I do actually retain those, so I, I would never actually uh, submit this in. Uh, but uh, here it is uh, for those that uh, who do. You can take a look at that information there and how to do it. I believe this is long since expired. Uh, I'm not sure when it expires. I think it might have been 2011 or until uh, supplies uh, run out and it's uh, been uh, over a year already so this is no longer uh, valid now uh, go ahead and take a look at uh, Dengar and his uh, weaponry here and uh, he has uh, a few weapons and a, a neat accessory here and uh, first up uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the pistol that's in the holster here and it's uh, a typical blaster pistol but has some painted detail on uh, here uh, with on the barrel the tip of the barrel is painted in silver which is kind of neat and uh, a dark gray uh, painted on uh, the grip pistol grip yeah uh, so that's a uh, pretty cool and you can see some of the sculpted detail on here as well it's actually uh, pretty cool 
and the figure does wield it uh, sufficiently which is uh, pretty neat and uh, Dengar also uh, carries around a blaster here and you can see him uh, wielding that and let's go ahead and take it out of his grip here and he does have a, a nice grip on this as well and uh, you see here it's a nice long blaster I believe it's the same blaster that Forlom uses except for this one's actually painted differently uh, this one's uh, in uh, black plastic I believe Forlom's was in silver or gray and uh, also uh, there's some painted uh, area right here on the shoulder stock in brown um, but you can see uh, the details of the blaster here uh, blaster rifle on there pretty cool and uh, the final accessory uh, that comes included with Dengar is the backpack here uh, which I really never knew uh, he had because we always saw uh, Dengar from the front in the movie and very briefly actually so I didn't actually kn know that he wielded it uh, or carried around a backpack so it's kind of cool and this backpack is nicely detailed you can see all the sculpting detail here and uh, some uh, silver here I don't know if what that is maybe a mine uh, but you can see all the neat details he's got a roll right there a bed roll maybe uh, kind of neat there and strapped into place or it's actually sculpted but uh, uh, sculpted straps there very cool just a very neat uh, neatly designed uh, piece of uh, accessory there and that just pegs into his back right there you can see the peg hole in the back of the figure and the peg here and uh, it's kind of hollowed out a little bit uh, if you want to put other accessories in there smaller accessories that can fit in there uh, you can actually do that and just uh, peg that in and uh, that's actually uh, pretty cool now uh, taking a look at uh, Dengar himself one of the iconic six bounty hunters uh, from the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, unfortunately he was not able to track down Han Solo uh, one of the five not able to but uh, still and uh, it's a pretty nice figure and and he's also one of the two uh, humanoids of the Iconic Six. So you can clearly see uh, he's a very humanoid looking figure uh, on here and uh, it's actually uh, pretty cool if I can get it into focus here. Let me just raise this up a little bit and uh, you can see uh, very humanoid uh, features on the face there and he has this uh, head wrapping uh, that's, uh, that helps identify him uh, easily identified as Dengar by those uh, wrappings around the head uh, cloth wrappings and it's nicely uh, painted there you can see some brown uh, to make it look very uh, s not soiled but dirty uh, worn and it's actually uh, pretty cool. You can see some of the sculpting details on the head wrappings there. It's actually uh, kind of neat. Now the folds in the cloth, uh, pretty cool. And there, and it does cover a portion of his face, uh, which uh, is from that iconic photo. Pretty cool. And uh, you can see Dengar. Uh, he's uh, partially covered in armor. Uh, more of a almost like a leather like uh, type of armor uh, patch uh, work type design and they're very cool and you can see some uh, cloth underneath uh, the patches uh, patchwork armor there uh, pretty cool let me just go ahead and take the backpack off there and you can actually see some sculpted straps uh, going uh, down the, his back there it's actually uh, kind of neat He's got some gauntlets here, and but uh, and shoulder uh, armor uh, pieces there. It's actually kind of neat. Uh, but you can see over here, mainly in the torso area, where uh, the majority of the armor is located. It's actually uh, kind of neat. He got these sculpted details on here. Very cool, painted in brown, uh, darker brown at the upper uh, torso, but the lower torso is just a little bit lighter brown on there. And also uh, his uh, crotch area and belt, which is uh, pretty interesting here. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, really classify this as an accessory, but this is actually uh, is removable. I don't know if it was intended or not, 
but there are two slots, uh, basically uh, shallow slots here on the sides of his uh, torso here, where the belt actually, uh, I guess, slides in or clips in the place on here. And I was not expecting this to be to be removable, but. Uh, on my particular figure it is, uh, like I said, I don't know if that was intended or not, uh, but you can actually see some sculpting detail here of the uh, suit, uh, the strap on his, I guess, flight suit, you can call it, uh, goes around, oh, uh, goes underneath. Uh, what I may do is I may end up gluing it uh, on there, and there's really no hindrance on articulation uh, where it would need to be removed or not. So I, I most likely will just end up gluing it in place because I, I really don't ever foresee uh, having to remove this piece. So, But uh, pretty interesting on there. And uh, moving down you have here uh, more uh, patchwork like armor on the leggings. Very neat. And uh, he has his holster where you can place the blaster pistol on. You just uh, fit that in there. That's uh, pretty cool. And then you have uh, more uh, armor here uh, covering the knees and the uh, lower leg and you got some uh, strap work here on some sculpting. Uh, pretty cool. And he looks like he's wearing a pair of moccasins really uh, for shoe, uh, shoe wear. Uh, but you can see uh, some of the detail on the shoe wear. Uh, going around the toe area is actually pretty cool and you can see also some of the paint work uh, that's actually very nicely done uh, again uh, painted to look like a uh, very worn and very weathered uh, on there and uh, all, as well as on the suit uh, although not as much uh, but uh, still pretty cool uh, to have uh, this guy uh, in figure form uh, especially if you're a fan of the iconic six uh, bounty hunters uh, very very neat now uh, going over articulation uh, the head is on a simple uh, ball joint uh, at, at the neck so the head can go all the way around and can go uh, up and down a bit even uh, side to side which is uh, nice for some uh, posing on there it's very cool uh, the arms do go all the way around at the shoulders and they do go out about that far and uh, in at the shoulders. Uh, the elbows, uh, they do bend as well as uh, rotate uh, all the way around. So that's kind of neat. And the hands uh, actually rotate around at the forearm area instead of the wrist. Uh, they can go all the way around. And uh, the right hand here is more of a trigger uh, pulling uh, pose or a pointing pose almost while uh, the uh, left hand is in a more gripping pose there the torso uh, can uh, go all the way around as well as uh, up and down uh, slightly as well as uh, side to side uh, in a, a rotational uh, uh, direction as well so it's probably on a ball joint there uh, the legs are on a basic T crotch uh, angled uh, where the legs are angled outwards uh, and the leg can go up down and uh, very far back further back than forward uh, maybe uh, with this armor piece removed you can get a little bit higher but not that much on there and the uh, knees do bend uh, back that far and forward and uh, they also uh, allow the leg to go all the way around at the knee and the feet uh, can bend uh, downwards and uh, upwards as well as uh, all the way around so some decent articulation uh, for this figure uh, uh, which is pretty nice and you can get them in a variety of poses uh, which is a uh, nice uh, favorable, favorable uh, poses uh, very happy to have uh, one of the iconic six bounty hunters uh, and um, he will definitely be going into my lineup of Star Wars uh, uh, mercenaries for hire uh, for tracking down uh, whatever the Empire <laughs> needs. Uh, but uh, this is my casual peek into the Star Wars Vintage Collection Dengar uh, action figure set. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.
Thank you.